Stacy, you remember what the scene looked like when we talked before when the team was just arriving at the airport. Obviously, we've got a much larger spectacle now, and all of the people that are assembled here, I'd estimate the crowd just what I can see in front of me and what you can see here in front of City Hall leading out toward Dickerson Road to be somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe four or five hundred people, just what I can see. And I say just what I can see because the procession of people standing alongside Dickerson Road up toward Two Mile Pike in the Rivergate area is lined with people waiting to just wave at these young men who have carried the banner of Goodlettsville, of Middle Tennessee, and our entire state to the country these past couple of weeks as, as they have been playing these live, nationally televised games. It's really been a big deal. Now, our men pulled up just short of the world title after a very emotional game on Saturday afternoon late against the California team set them up to play in the championship game at this point they're undefeated all the way through the tournament and that is what has captured the imaginations of all of these people. I've talked to any number of people who've been living and working in this area for a long time. In fact I was talking to a longtime Goodlettsville police officer a moment ago and I said do you remember anything in the last 25 years that drew people together as this event has and he says I can remember back even further and I can't think of any singular event that has drawn people together that people have gotten behind and you know there's a lot of talk about Goodlettsville but as I mentioned in our earlier live report for those who weren't with us this team has young men from three different Middle Tennessee counties on it you've got some folks from just up the hill here in Greenbrier and uh, the Ridgetop area of Robertson County that play on this team because of the location of Goodlettsville and Mosswright Park the county line to take you over to Sumner County is about a mile straight down this way, down Long Hollow Pike. As soon as you pass Maskers Creek, you're in Sumner County. And the park that these guys play in, their home games, but even the all-star team is actually in Sumner County. So you've got guys from that part of Goodlettsville. And you have young men from as far away as Hendersonville. Now, if you see the crowd stirring some, and starting to cheer, it's because the police escort that is leading the bus that these young men are on is actually in our vicinity. There was a helicopter overhead along with a police escort, so I knew they were in the neighborhood. What the uh, plan is for this large bus that uh, the type you might see to carry a rock band or a country band around, that's what these guys are on, and it's certainly appropriate because they are getting the rock star treatment today. But they're going to pull off of Dickerson Road and they'll be taking a left on Memorial Drive, which will take them down the side of the city of Goodlettsville City Hall. And then in between Goodlettsville City Hall and the B.F. Myers Furniture Store, which is directly behind City Hall, as a lot of folks know, they're going to be turning up that way and then coming down back onto Dickerson Road. The bus will pull right in front of this area where you see all those people gathered up there by the red lights. The bus doors will open. And the plan is that we'll have something uh, along the lines of a parting of the Red Sea and we'll see those young men that have been, yeah, you hear me, Stacy. This, uh, this sea of humanity is going to part and we're going to let Brock Myers and all of his teammates and coaches walk right up here to the steps of the city of Goodlettsville where they've got a really nice podium set up. There's microphones up there like, like Garth Brooks is in town and he's about to do a show. That's what's going on here. It's kind of that big a deal. Well, it, they they're got just some, about that big, aren't they, Scott? I'm telling you, I, the bus is already on Memorial and it's about to make that right-hand turn, you know, right so you don't go into Goodlettsville City Park. So it's making the turn right now. It's directly sort of in front of me going in between B.F. Myers Furniture Store and Goodlettsville City Hall. And then it's going to come out over here. And the folks here, if you're wondering how can they be so subdued, well, they've all been briefed when I just told all of you, know, you guys back at the office and all of the viewers that was going to happen. Chief Richard Pope of uh, Goodlettsville, he's the police chief here and uh, has been for quite some time. And he's been with the force my entire adult life. He told all of these guys what was going to happen, so they have been briefed. And I think leading the pack over here, Jason, you might be able to pick them up over here. Jason Maxwell is my partner. There is a, a really nice fire department vehicle from Goodlettsville that's all shiny. They've got a ladder truck that says 41-8 on the side of it that's sort of leading the procession now that they're right here in downtown Goodlettsville. The horns are honking and the assembled crowd right out here along Dickerson Road is really starting to whip it up. These guys are getting fired up. They know that bus is coming. I see the police escort now. The bus has not yet made its way to my position that's sort of directly adjacent to City Hall so they can get on Dickerson Road and come up here. But uh, there's a tremendous procession that made all this happen. Metro officers were involved, Goodlettsville police officers. Now I see that bus, and it's exactly the type of bus.
Look at there. That's great. Here it comes. And there's another nice fire truck behind that one. Just hear the music cranked up. I'm assuming this is going to be that Go Goodlettsville song that we've been playing some. No, this is Queen and we are the champions. <laughs> and they certainly are. Isn't that appropriate, Stace? Oh, absolutely appropriate. You know, what's interesting is that we have this huge crowd here. Many of these people have been waiting all day long because the travel plans have changed many times throughout the day. What have they told you about the wait? That is well worth it, I assume. Well, some folks, you know, have been plugged in, and there's a lot of people that are tweeting from this area. In fact, I, I tweeted from this location live when they were on the ground, and we got the information from Chief Pope that they were leaving the airport. I said they'll be here in about 20 minutes, and that has run pretty true. But the crowd has built steadily. You've got a lot of moms and dads and grandfathers and children who got out of school early. Of course, now at this hour of the day, the kids are just out. So uh, they're showing up, but the crowd has built because I think word of mouth is spreading. You know how it is. You tell somebody and uh, pretty soon the uh, the phone tree has begun. Absolutely. And we this, are now. Yeah. In this yeah. day in social media, you can, uh, you can find out things in a flash, can't you? Tell you what, the uh, the Twitter world and uh, Facebook, uh, you know, we are, you know, among those in the electronic news gathering and sharing business that really share on those. So I would tell our viewers, if you want to stay plugged in up to the minute, you check out our Facebook page, fox17.com, and follow us on Twitter, and you'll get the updates like I've been sending. We've got uh, just young people being held up by their parents above the crowd so they can take this in. It's good stuff. Scott, I'll Very tell you, you know, stuff. I got chill bumps when I saw them get off the plane earlier uh, when John Dunn was live with us. Uh, what about you personally? I know that, that you're from Sumner County, live in Sumner County, not from Sum Sumner County, but live there. How do you feel about it? I'll be very honest, I've never paid so much attention to Little League Baseball in my entire life, uh, and uh, we won't uh, go into exactly how many years that is, but <laughs> these guys have captured my attention the same way they have people here. Uh, Jim Cooper's here, the congressman. I saw Anthony Holt, who was the Sumner County Mayor. I saw Courtney Rogers, who's a Republican candidate for state senate. They're going to be on the ballot in Sumner County, and uh, part of uh, Davidson County as well, you know, come November. They are all here. Get a little piece of this. And I mentioned grandparents. I saw Brock Myers' grandparents uh, here a minute ago. They actually made the trip, but they, as soon as they hit the ground, they may have taken another flight, but they were here early. And they've had a tremendous trip. And people that have small connections. I was talking with a woman who said her husband actually coached Brock Myers' mother in softball when uh, she was a very young person. And it was so neat to hear that story and feel that so many people have a connection to this family and to this team. And those are the types of people that are here now just celebrating with these boys. Absolutely. I don't want to say that, you know, that nothing this big has ever happened because we have had teams from Tennessee that have you know, gone really, really deep into this particular contest, but it's been a long time since any team from Tennessee. My memory is about 30 years ago, there was a team from Elizabethan over in East Tennessee that made a similar journey deep into the Little League World Series playoffs. but. It's been that long, and, and while that was Tennessee and we were pleased, this is different because it's home folks. And uh, I, I don't remember any time in the last quarter century that a little league team, a high school team, anything like that has generated this kind of crowd. Now I want you guys to see, these are the guys coming up. There's one of the coaches, and here are the young men that are making their way up to this podium. They've got bags with them, and the crowd is parting. That's one of the coaches right there being congratulated by people. That's Chief Richard Pope I was telling you about a second ago, leading the way. There are those young men. There's number 25 coming up, the man that we've seen so much of. So many young men on this team, 12- and 13-year-old boys who are experiencing something that, quite frankly, is bigger than a lot of college athletes. Oh, they're, they're chanting USA. Do you hear that? Oh, we hear that loud and clear. A moment of pride for all of us, Scott. Uh, yeah. You know, we didn't win the world title, but we certainly took care of the business here in the States, only lost one game in what was otherwise a double elimination tournament. And after that emotional game with California, there's so much pride for what these young men were able to pull off. And uh, some wind was out of their sail in that, in that final championship game with Japan, taking nothing away from the Japanese team and the, the ball that those boys played. 
but we are just so proud here in Middle Tennessee of what this team of all stars from Goodlettsville who plays their ball at Moss Wright Park about two miles from here was able to accomplish the team uh, still uh, some of the guys associated with the team are making their way to the podium moms uh, as well you see all that and uh, there is a gentleman who is uh, approaching the podium so one would gather that in fairly short order. While he makes his way up there, Scott, place. you know, what I noticed when we talked to the guys out at the airport, we talked to one of the players, is uh, although there was so much pride associated with this, they're so humble. So humble. Well, I tell you what, good stock, and I'm a little biased because I'm from this neck of the woods, but we're proud of these guys, what they've accomplished. I want to tell all of the viewers that this is just the beginning of our coverage. Fox 17 brought it to you live when they landed. Fox 17 News brought it to you live when they arrived here at Goodlettsville City Hall to about 500 or more people wishing them well. And Fox 17 will be bringing you continued coverage of this great feel-good story tonight at 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock. So for now, I'm Scott Couch reporting live from Goodlettsville City Hall. We'll send it back to you in the studio and promise more great coverage in the hours to come. We've got it coming. Thank you, Scott. There are more plans to celebrate our hometown heroes. A parade to honor the Goodlettsville team is being organized for September the 8th at Moss Wright Park. As we get more information about that, we will, of course, pass it along to you. Now, we want to let you know the whole team, all 13 of them, will be live in this studio with us on Fox 17 starting tonight at 9 o'clock during our newscast. So join us for that. Until then, you can keep up with this wonderful news at news at fox17.com. Also, you can uh, catch us on Facebook and Twitter as well. And we will return you now to your regularly scheduled programming.